What are some of the precautions that people should be taking right now? Well, you know, this is kind of the calm before the storm. So this is a time where we actually have a chance to make a difference on, on the progression of this pandemic uh, across Nova Scotia and Cape Breton. Um, some of the precautions, well, the first thing is I think people have to take this very seriously. Uh, this is a virus that humans uh, have not been exposed to before. And because of that, we have no experience. Our immune systems don't know how to deal with this virus. Now, many people, our immune systems will react and, and they will have a very mild illness or perhaps no symptoms. But for some people, this virus is able to overwhelm their immune system and to really cause a serious and potentially fatal infection. Um, you know, some of the numbers I want people to kind of consider is, you know, this hospital we serve here in Shetty Camp, uh, we serve about 10,000 people. What we're finding out, we are just, you know, we're just starting to find out some real numbers about what this virus does, what COVID-19 does. But we know that, you know, if, we, if we're not smart and if we don't do some certain precautions, that up to 70 to 80 percent of the population will get exposed and infected. So if we talk about our area of 10,000 people, that means there's going to be 7,000 people um, that will get exposed and infected. We know now about 10% about of those of people will get sick enough that they probably have to come into hospital. They need supportive therapy, whether it be oxygen, mask, and things like that. So 10% of 7,000 is about 700 people. We have a bed here in Shetty Camp that has 10, sorry, we have a hospital here in Shetty Camp that has 10 beds. So you gotta really look at those numbers. The other thing we know is depending on the country and the healthcare system, the fatality rate, the mortality rate, how many people die when they get infected is around two to 3%. So again, if we, if we apply it to the numbers here, we're talking potentially 200, 300, 400 deaths. Um, and so again, this is a virus that we have to take seriously because it has the potential if it does spread and have those numbers, those levels of infection, uh, it can overwhelm the healthcare system. So precautions, well, the number one precaution is take it seriously. The second is, you know, the reason that everything is shutting down, which, you know, some people say is, is kind of overblown, is we do need as a population to isolate, to self-isolate and to, to quarantine ourselves. So that means, you know, no play dates. You know, the kids are off of school, but that doesn't mean kind of sending them around to their friend's house and having play dates. Uh, having friends over for playing cards and things like that, uh, Mika Ram, you know, there's a reason why all this is being stopped. There's a reason why we can't eat out in restaurants. Uh, we need to put distance between people so this virus cannot hop from one house to another house to another house to another person. So this kind of uh, social isolation um, is something that we have to take very seriously and people have to, to really understand that it, it makes a big difference in flattening the curve. People have probably heard, what does that mean, flattening the curve? Well, if we don't do any of this, a lot of people are going to get the virus and you get very sick very quickly. Um, and then our hospitals will not be able to deal with that. If we do distance ourselves, if we kind of spread out, isolate ourselves, just go out for the necessities, um, then this virus will not uh, infect a lot of people right away. And the amount of spread, it, it may take longer, but the number of people that are sick at one time will be a lot less. So that flattens, that big spike flattens it down, spreads it out a little bit. <clears throat> so that here in Shetty Camp, the doctors can deal with the people that do get sick. Because instead of having uh, 200 people get sick this week, maybe we'll only have 10. And we can help those 10 people and make sure that they have the best care possible and survive. So social isolation is, is, is really important. You probably heard this already, but washing your hands. People need to wash their hands. This is a virus that if you wash your hands properly, so that means good 30 seconds, sing happy birthday twice, uh, you know, and that uh, it kills things. And this is a virus that we are learning now can stay on surfaces for sometimes several hours, if not longer. We don't know yet. Uh, and so uh, disinfecting doorknobs, um, trying not to use cash as much as possible, um, doing things over the phone, ordering things, getting things delivered to your doorstep. So there isn't this kind of, you know, no shaking hands. Um, you know, that can also help uh, stop this virus from spreading from person to person. What are the symptoms? Well, you know, the, um, we're realizing that the, the symptoms range a great deal. So some people may have no symptoms. 
Some people may catch this and not even know. Many people will have a, a, a mild cold. Coronaviruses, as, as in general, this is a family of viruses. The, the coronaviruses like to cause cold-like symptoms. So for some people, maybe a mild cold, sore throat, a uh, bit of a uh, you know, mild cough, and it progresses on. Some people can you know, start having high fevers, uh, a cough, usually a dry cough. So people aren't coughing up a lot of stuff. But we're realizing there's a lot of variety in, in, in the symptoms that people present. Um, what is concerning is that some people get very sick. And this, uh, this virus gets into the lungs and causes fibrosis and scarring, fills up the lungs with fluid very quickly. So for some people, it, it could be a matter of a, a couple of days, they go from having a little bit of a fever, cough, to not being able to breathe, not being able to get oxygen into their blood and getting very sick. So the, 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 the scale ranges from asymptomatic, meaning no symptoms, to getting very sick very quickly. What should people do if they think they have COVID-19? Well, if, if you think you have COVID-19, so some of the questions you have to ask yourself, do you have a fever? Are you coughing? Those are concerning symptoms. Have you traveled outside the country? Um, or have you been in contact with somebody who's traveled outside of the country? That increases your risk. Having said that, as this virus starts to spread, you know, we may start to see community spread where people who haven't traveled are getting infected because other people in the community are spreading it. If you think you're concerned about COVID-19, first of all, do not go to the hospital. Um, unless you're extremely ill, having trouble breathing, in which case you should phone 911. But uh, do not come to the hospital. Do not go to the clinic because the last thing we want is someone who might have COVID-19 coming into a waiting room or going into emergency room where there are potentially other vulnerable people and spreading this virus. So if you think you are ill, phone 811. Um, and uh, there's actually another phone number out there as well because 811 is getting a lot of phone calls. So, um, but there are, uh, I don't have that number on the top of my head, but there is another number out there. Um, so phone these numbers um, and a nurse is going to then ask you some questions. And if they feel necessary, they will make an appointment for you to go to a COVID-19 testing center. And there are new testing centers opening up. In fact, today in Inverness, at the Inverness Hospital, uh, today on Thursday, they have just started a, a testing center. So you just can't go there. They're going to not see you. But if you have an appointment, now we have a testing center on the western part of Cape Breton to, to be testing people. Is that the closest one? That's the closest one for here for people in western Cape Breton. My understanding is there's the one that was set up in Sydney, uh, in Inverness, and there's also one being set up in Port Hawkesbury. What services are being offered here in Shetty Camp? So in Shetty Camp, um, you know, if people think, again, if they think that they are, may have been infected or concerned about that, we would advise them not to come in. Use a system that's in place, so phone 811. If someone is um, uh, feeling quite ill, they will, we will see them in the emergency department. We have the ability to, we have special rooms that people can be isolated in, and the healthcare system has a team um, that uh, we can get dressed in appropriate uh, masks and gloves and gowns uh, so that we would be safe when we see the patients. If patients are quite, quite ill and they are coming to the emergency department, it's also important to phone the emergency department ahead of time so that we can be prepared before you arrive. What would you say to people who had medical tests or procedures canceled? Yeah, you know, this is... Um, um, uh, I remember when I was in medical school, I uh, took a course about the history of medicine, and we talked about how doctors 200 years ago dealt with uh, infections and epidemics and pandemics. Um, and this is really historic. You know, there's been, it hasn't been, a, uh, you know, in North America a long time for us to take such extensive measures. And some of those measures that we're doing is um, canceling uh, routine visits. Certainly here in the office, we are dissuading people from coming into the office um, doctors in Nova Scotia now are able to um, uh, treat people, talk to people, assess people over the phone. So our clinic is uh, doing visits for people um, over the phone. Most things can be dealt with over the phone. If it's a prescription refill or someone has a, a minor physical um, uh, or mental complaint, we can help them over the phone. If we feel that they need to come in, then uh, we'll make arrangements for that. 
So one of the things we're doing at the clinic here is uh, being able to see patients, uh, schedule them for, for phone visits. But a lot of things are being canceled. And so people's stress tests, people's uh, uh, minor surgeries and things like that are being canceled. And, and the reason is that it is a kind of an all hands on deck mentality. We cannot have hospital beds um, or operating rooms or emergency rooms uh, being used for things that could be put off a month or two. And we don't know how long this pandemic is going to last. Um, some people may find that frustrating. But again, the numbers I spoke to at the beginning of the interview, if 10% of the population in just this part of, of Cape Breton need to be hospitalized, that, that will be 700 people. And we have 10 beds. So we need to make sure that we are ready to deal with potentially uh, a wave of very sick people. And to do that, we need to be canceling a, a bunch of other medical procedures. Do you know if anybody here in the area has been tested already? Um, so uh, the in the area here, you know, there are people that uh, have been tested. Uh, and to my knowledge, no one has tested positive on this side of K Breton. Um, my understanding is that there is a positive test in K Breton, but more in the Sydney area. And I don't know specifics to that. You know, it, th that is meaningless, really, because if people are kind of waiting for there to be a positive test uh, to change their behavior, uh, they shouldn't. There will be positive tests in Shetty Camp, in Inverness, uh, and in between. Um, this virus is already here. Um, and as we increase our testing, as the testing site gets uh, up and going in Inverness, uh, there will be positive cases. Hopefully most of them will be mild. But um, the fact that it's negative today, uh, in a few days, um, you know, the numbers will start to go up. Would you make any changes to the system that Nova Scotia has set up? Uh, you know, no, I think that the, one of the great things I, I'm realizing is that the whole healthcare system is working very well together. Um, there is great communication from the health authority um, to physicians and to clinics. Um, uh, we are reacting as, as fast as a healthcare system can react, I think. You know, we have set up testing clinics. We are making major changes in how we deliver uh, care to patients, uh, whether it be over the phone or over other virtual means. Um, we are getting prepared in our emergency departments and in our hospitals. Um, you know, we are uh, looking ahead to what would happen if there are staffing problems, if any of the doctors or nurses were to get sick, you know, how we can adapt to that. Um, and so, I, I, you know, I think I, I am proud to say the healthcare system is certainly um, doing the best it's can, it can uh, in these situations. Anything that you'd like to add? Um, did I mention wash your hands uh, and self-isolate? That's extremely important. People have to take this seriously. Um, minimize your interaction with people and, um, and wash your hands. And, you know, we will get through this. Hopefully it will um, not be as bad as it could be. And that's the thing we have to remember, that this potentially could be quite devastating. But if we do what we, we know what we need to do, we can get through this.